Oi hoi, the Weera turbo screwdriver. As you guys know, I'm a massive fan of Weera and this is a kit I've wanted for almost two years now. I'm gonna take you through the applications of it, where it sort of fails, what I like and what I don't like about the kit. Before you all say, that's not how you say it, I know how the Germans say it, but here in Australia we say Weera, so I'm just gonna keep to that. So if you haven't seen the kit, this is what you get. So it folds up into this nice little kit as most of the Weera gear does. And that's one thing I do love about all the Weera gear. Obviously they come in the compact little kits, nice to put into your tool pouch or your car, wherever it is. And it also makes them look really appealing. So this is the kit, 16 pieces as you can see. It's all insulated VDE, so that's 1000 volt rated. So it's great for electricians. This is the normal handle, so nothing too special about that. You slide these bits out nice and easy and that'll clip straight in. You don't have to push down the button to get it in and it stays in, but then to remove it, you just press that button pull it out nice and easy, slot it straight back into the case. With the 16 pieces, you've obviously got a range of different heads. So these are all your Torx heads. These are all your Phillips bits. You've got a few different ones. These are all the PZs. If you haven't seen any of the PZ bits, you should wrap your head around these, especially as an electrician. They fit so many outlets or terminals. Uh, they're a bloody brilliant little bit. As you can see, it's a little bit different to your normal pH bit. That's your normal pH2, and that's your PZ2. On top of that, they've also got the PZS, which has that little groove out of the tip there, if you can see that compared to your normal PZ. And what you'll find is on a lot of switch gear, inside, these actually fit perfectly. They have that little cutout inside their terminal. So these are absolutely perfect for switchboard work. Then you've got your normal pH bits, your normal Phillips few different sizes, and then you go down to all your flat blades. And if you are wanting more details on the sizes, I'll leave all that in the description. So you're not all here for the normal handle, but I'll quickly just show you, just compared to your normal Weera PH2 bit, as you can see, quite similar. The little handle that you're given with this kit is a little bit smaller, which some people might like, some people might not. I really do like the original size in the hand, really nice grips. But we are all here to see the turbo. So as you can see, it's actually quite a lot larger compared to the smaller bit and even compared to your original handle. So the first thing you notice is the little head on this. So you can see that sort of spins and that's where the actual mechanism comes into play with the turbo feature. So you've got the button on the back. When you press that, it locks that front handle in. So it's now a solid screwdriver. So let's say I'm doing up this RCBO terminal, just use it as a normal screwdriver. It is a little bit heavier and a little bit bulkier compared to a normal screwdriver, so keep that in mind. So let's click this button in and I'll show you how this works. And one of the main downfalls straight away is when you click it, so now you have to hold it with two hands. So if you are screwing into anything, back to these terminals for example, if I turn that, as you can see, it's not really spinning that much. And if you put any pressure on it, it's just gonna spin freely. So we'll use the two hands and as you can see, it's spinning. And that definitely went in a lot quicker. So this goes at a ratio of four to one. And so what that means is for every one rotation, it's actually gonna spin four times. So I'll give you a quick demonstration. I'll put a little mark here just so you can see it spinning. And so if I turn this like a quarter, you've got one turn, another quarter, Another turn. So every time I get this on a quarter, that's a whole turn at the actual shaft. This is where the second problem sort of comes up. It's not really a problem, but the amount of torque that is produced from this because you have now put a few gears into it and you've upped the ratio, the amount of torque is at an absolute minimum. So I've put this screw into this timber. It's not very thick. It's probably 10 mil thick. It's all the way through. If I put that on there, and with the turbo activated, that's, oh, it's really, really struggling. Whereas a normal screwdriver, it's an absolute breeze. So here's another scenario just on a general PowerPoint and we'll do this up with the turbo on. So it just gets to that point where you can't do it anymore. You'll have to turn that on or off, deactivate the turbo, and you can still get a few turns. So I'd love to know what the actual torque rating is for when the turbo is activated. It seems that it's 14 newton meters 
with it deactivated, so when you're just doing it normally, and you can really feel it, because as you can see, there's a bit of play in it, which I'm actually quite surprised about. And this was the case straight out of the packet. This isn't too old yet, so it hasn't really been flogged out or anything. But as you can see, I'll put it on that. We've got that amount of play, and when you're putting in something just a little bit harder, this, is, this isn't that hard, obviously. It's already been through quite a few times. You can really sort of feel it push against the gears. It sort of feels like in the long run, if you're doing a lot of that sort of work, where you just might be pushing it a little bit too hard, I feel like the gearing may break. I haven't heard any stories of it, so if it has happened to you, hit me up, I'd love to know. But then at the end of the day, I guess if you're not using it for what it's actually for, just sort of tightening up terminals and that sort of thing, then I guess it's not really their fault. I'll take you out of the switchboard, I'll show you another application and also another problem. Uh, don't say too much about this board. This is going to be ripped out and replaced. This is the original one for the house that we're renovating. So this is where it really comes in handy. Obviously being VDE, you're gonna be using it on switchboards and outlets, that sort of stuff. This is all isolated. I definitely don't recommend working in live boards, but this is where one of the other problems sort of comes into play. With the handle being, like it's larger than a normal one, but it's still quite small to be using with two hands. I've got I guess medium size to larger hands. If we're gonna be using that turbo function, you're gonna have two hands in there rather than just the one. So you're now getting a little bit closer to the terminals. And if I try to, let's actually try to loosen this one with the, no, I can't actually loosen with the turbo function. That's fascinating. I, didn't th I thought it would actually get that. So we'll turn the turbo off, so now it's a normal screwdriver. And that was, <laughs> it's not highly torqued, just sort of hand tight. So just a little click, easy to loosen. Turn the turbo back on and yeah, that's not gonna. So realistically, anything like that, you're gonna have to loosen it like that, turn the turbo on and then do it. It's not a huge problem. But I guess it would be nice just to have that little bit extra torque. I don't know if they can fix that. Obviously it's gonna come down to the gearing, but I guess it's just something else to keep in mind if you're looking at getting something like this. While we're here, I'll do up some of these flatties. So it's sort of awkward because I'm up against the board now. So I'm hoping you can see this, but this is with the turbo on. I gotta admit that's where it really comes in handy. It is extremely quick. It does feel all right for something like this. And this is with the flat blade, which isn't always the best and the easiest thing to do. So let's do a side by side, fresh screw. We've got the timer. I'm gonna use two hands for this as I would normally do if I'm doing something like this. Uh, obviously I'm not gonna be driving anything into timber like this usually, but just to show you, we'll start. Look around six to seven seconds. Go with the turbo on, start. Looking just, that was just over three seconds. So let's say three to four seconds. It's almost twice as quick. So yeah, it definitely does what they say it does. So a few other things, these aren't magnetized. As you can see, you can get your magnetizers or you could buy one of these bits that goes over the top. There you go, nice and easy. This kit does also come with the Velcro on the back and it comes with a, another piece which is adhesive. That way you can stick it to your van wall, your workshop wall, whatever. I haven't used it because it usually just goes into a tool bag or floats around. Also, I don't know if you can clean these because I've heard from a few people that over time they stop really working. I guess like any Velcro, they just get full of muck and don't work as well. So. That's another thing to keep in mind. So pricing, these cost me 153 on sale on Amazon. I'll leave the link in the description. That's in Australia. Obviously we pay a little bit extra for our Wira gear. Usually these are over $200. I think at the moment, which is the 21st of January, they are down to 180 dollars from 200 and something. It's definitely worthwhile waiting for those sales. If you're gonna jump onto something like this, that's why I didn't buy it for so long. I think if you can get this at that lower price, it's a great little kit for throwing into your tool bag. 
and you're doing a lot of board work. I couldn't see it being utilized too much elsewhere other than electrical boards because it is VDE, you're paying that little bit extra. I couldn't really see these being used on the back of electrical outlets just because you've got to use two hands and usually you've got to hold the outlet with your other hand. So I think that's really where this would be used is just switchboard. I think if you're gonna start looking at getting something like this to make your life easier and quicker, you'll probably start looking at electric screwdrivers. Obviously not all electric screwdrivers are VDE, thousand volt rated. And the only one I do know is the Weha Speedy one and two. I have actually got the Speedy two on the way coming. So I'm gonna do a whole review and probably compare it to things like this and the vessel. And I'll leave some links in the description for those so you can go check those out. So if you enjoyed the review of this or just wanna see any of my work on the renovation, check out these videos. Cheers guys.